It's time now for the Mule Train News Program on this Thursday, August 24, 2023. Brought to you today by Leal's Mexican Restaurant. Chapel service for Dolores Valeria Jacobs Catron, 93 of Albuquerque, is set for 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon, August the 26th at the Ellis Funeral Home Chapel here in Muleshoe with Dr. Stacey Connor officiating burial will follow in the Bailey County Cemetery. Dolores died on Monday, August 21st in Albuquerque. She was born November 26, 1929 in Blanket, Texas to Wesley Lloyd and Lois Beatrice Long Jacobs. She was formerly married to the late Buddy Eugene Jones. She later married Elmer Catron in Amarillo in 1982. Dolores loved reading her Bible. She was a huge fan of playing games and playing cards with her friends and family. She was a homemaker for most of her life and absolutely adored that. Above all, her greatest love was her family. She is preceded in death by her husband, Elmer, a son, Michael, Mike Jones, one grandson, James Fair, one great-grandson, Daniel Edwards, three sisters, one brother, and her parents. Dolores is survived by two daughters, Vicki Johnson of Dallas, Kathy, and husband, Lavoy Edwards of Albuquerque, Emily Pickard of Littlefield, one brother, Wesley Jacobs, Jr., and wife, Kathy of New Boston, Texas, eight grandchildren, and 19 great-grandchildren all survive her. Online condolences can be made at www.ellisfuneralhomes.com. And repeating chapel service for Dolores uh, Valeria Jacobs, Catron, 93 of Albuquerque, is set for 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon, August the 26th. At the Ellis Funeral Home Chapel in Milshi with Dr. Stacey Connor officiating. Barrel will follow in the Bailey County Cemetery. Church service for Gregorio Torres, 95 of El Paso, formerly of Milshu, is set, uh was held Saturday, August 19th at Santo Nino de Atocha Church in El Paso. Gregorio died on Saturday, August the 12th in El Paso. He was born May 19th, 1928 in San Antonio de los Gonzales, Mexico. He was married to Maria Hernandez. Gregorio loved working in his garden and doing anything outside. He was also an avid baseball fan. He is preceded in death by his parents and one brother. Gregorio survived by his wife, Maria, three sons, Francisco Torres, and his wife, Euphemia of Muleshoe. Jose Luis Torres and his wife Karina of El Paso, and Rene Torres and his wife Betty of Muleshoe. Two daughters, Dora Rosales and her husband Manuel of El Paso, Gloria Johnson and her husband Bobby of Stratford, Virginia, and three sisters survive him, one brother, 14 grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren. Please keep the family of Gregorio Torres on your prayer list. Again, his funeral service was held on August the 19th in El Paso, and uh, he died in El Paso on August the 12th. Church service for Peggy Kent Baker, 93, of Sudan, was held August the 15th at the Sudan Methodist Church with Reverend Cam Givian. Uh, given officiating burial followed in the Sudan Cemetery. Peggy died on Friday, August 11th. In Sudan, she was born October 3rd, 1929, in Sudan to Dudley and Polly Kaiser Kent. She married Calvin O. Baker in Muleshoe on January the 18th, 1947. Peggy was a homemaker who would rather be working in the yard than inside the house. She drove a tractor and worked in the cotton fields with her husband. Peggy was a collector of figurines, jewelry, and dogs. She was a member of the First United Methodist Church in Sudan. She is preceded in death by her husband, Calvin, two daughters, Sharon Wood, and Jeannie Province. Her parents, Dudley and Polly, a sister, Christine Brown, three brothers, son, Kent, Bill Kent, Pat Kent, and two great-grandsons, Cooper Chase and Logan Province. Peggy is survived by her son, Corley Baker, and his wife, Susan, her daughter, Sheila Nations, and her husband, Tom of Loveland. Her two sons, 
Uh, Sons-in-law Billy Wood of Runaway Bay, Texas, and Damon Province of Sudan. Two brothers, Joe Kent and his wife Lucy of Sudan, and Tim Kent and his wife Pat of Silverton. Her sister-in-law, Patsy Kent of Sudan. Ten grandchildren, uh, Donetta, Doug, Heather, Damon, Becky, Brian, Brooke, Brianne, Crystal, and uh, Marsha. Her 19 great-grandchildren all survivor, Cal, Nick, Haven, Tristan, Tyler, Haley, Abby, Josh, Ashton, Grayson, Jaden, Preston, Reese, Griffin, Callan, Zachary, Matthew, Libby, and Austin, and five great-great-grandchildren, Steele, Violet, Jack, Delilah, and Delaney. The family suggests memorials be sent to the Sudan Chapel Fund in care of City of Sudan P.O. Box, 59 Sudan, Texas 79371 or the Sudan Methodist Church 411 Main Street, Sudan, Texas 79371 or to the Sudan Volunteer Fire Department uh, and care of Penny Frumpau, Lindsay Davidson or excuse me, the Sudan Volunteer Fire Department P.O. Box 491 Sudan, Texas 79371. The family says a special thanks to the Legacy of Love Hospice Senior Mills Volunteers, Penny uh, Prempow, Lin Lindsay Davidson, and their special friend who became family, Sissy Sharp. Uh, and online condolences can be made at ellisfuneralhomes.com on their website. Please keep the fa uh, family of Peggy Kent Baker, 93 of Sudan, on your prayer list today. Her uh, funeral service was held August the 15th at the Sudan Methodist Church. Well, we released yesterday the Meet the Mules program that was held earlier in the month of August, on August 7th at Benny Douglas Football Stadium. The Mule Shoe Athletic Booster Club president for this year is Todd Shipman, and the MISD athletic director, head football coach, of course, is Jason Richards. It's a short and truncated version of Meet the Mules, as there on that day we had an impending storm that was heading toward Mule Shoe, so they didn't uh, introduce all of the players, but they introduced them as teams. Of course, they introduced the cheerleaders and had the mini mule uh, cheerleaders do all of their cheers, but it's a short version find that on the front page of our website muleshootv.com meet the mules for 2023 and uh, you can also find it on our facebook pages gil lamb channel 6 muleshoe our twitter feed channel 6 muleshoe and our youtube channel gil lamb advertising this is war on 84 week not only being the first week of the football season but it will be war on 84 week and the Mules will take on uh, the Littlefield Wildcats in their annual matchup, even though we're not in the same district anymore. Uh, the, a Friday evening, August 25th, kickoff is at 7 p.m. We'll be there live streaming, so join us about 6.45. We'll have Elliot Davis, our voice of the Mules, do a pregame, and then kickoff is at 7. But the very first game of the season is tonight, Thursday night, August the 20, uh, excuse me, August 24th is tonight, and the 25th is the Friday night game. But tonight is the first game. The JV will begin at 5 o'clock at Littlefield. And uh, that will be the first game of the season. So go to Littlefield and support the Mules as they take on Littlefield JV kickoff at 5 o'clock at Littlefield Wildcat Stadium. And then, of course, Friday night, August the 25th, will be the varsity uh, football game, the Mules versus Littlefield. And the pep rally will be at 1 or 11, 15 a.m. at the MHS Gymnasium. They will have a pre-game meal beginning at 4.30 until 6. We'll tell you more about that in just a second by the MHS junior class. And then the War on 84 kickoff at Benny Douglas Football Stadium is at 7 p.m. Go out and support the Mules varsity city versus littlefield uh, in person at benny douglas stadium david wood field and if you can't do that you can always join us on the front page of our website muleshoetv.com we'll have our live stream it should kick off about 6 45 p.m if we don't have any technical issues if we do have technical issues you'll have to excuse us in advance but we'll have up the full live stream video 
early Saturday morning if we do have technical problems with the live stream. Our broadcast of the Mule She Mules uh, uh, football versus Littlefield and the Meet the Mules is brought to you by Barrett Produce, Burton Service Center, Shipman's Body Shop and Autoplex, Leal's Tortilla Factory, Mule Shoe Animal Clinic and Vet Supply, Mule Shoe Independent School District, Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association, Mule Shoe Housing Authority, Mule Shoe Area Medical Center, Mohawk Auto Parts, WTG Fuels, Edward Jones, Stephen DeMint, and McDonald's Restaurant, along with McCormick Seed, Irrigation Pumps and Power, and Premier Chevrolet GMC of Littlefield. They're brand new over in Littlefield, and we'll tell you about a T-shirt giveaway they're sponsoring. You can go pick up your uh, free War on 84 shirts uh, today on Thursday or tomorrow on Friday. Now, this is the first game of the season on August 25th. Um, the War on 84, Mule Shoe versus Littlefield here at home. The next week, it'll be Mule Up against Childhood Cancer Game. It will be in Mule Shoe as well next week on September the 1st, and we'll be taking on the Golden Tornadoes of La Mesa. Then we'll be on the road week three, uh, September the 8th at Friona. Then right back here in Mule Shoe, uh, and we'll take on Toya on September the 15th. And mark it on your calendar. That will be the homecoming game for the Mules for the 2023 season. That's the first four games of the season. Those uh, on the varsity roster are player number zero, Aaron Morales. He's a wide receiver, linebacker, and a junior on the MHS varsity squad. Wearing number one, Yahir Quezada, wide receiver, defensive back. He's a junior. Wearing number two, Nathan Martins. He'll be the starting quarterback and defensive back. He's a junior. Mauricio Herrera, wide receiver, defensive back. He's a junior, and he wears number three. Wearing number four, Ryan Dominguez, quarterback, defensive back, and he's a junior. Wearing number six, Johnny Hernandez, wide receiver, defensive back. He's a sophomore. Wearing number seven is the senior Sebastian Curvin, wide receiver and linebacker. Wearing number eight, Angel Cabrera, wide receiver, defensive back. He's a junior. Wearing number 10 is the freshman, Jose Sigala, wide receiver, defensive back. Wearing number 11, Donovan Moreno, wide receiver, linebacker, and he's a junior. Wearing number 12, Hayden Burris, running back and a linebacker. He's a junior. Wearing uh, number 13 is senior, uh, Kaiser Carrera, wide receiver, defensive line. Matt Hoff is number 14, sophomore, running back, linebacker. Jermaine Flores is wearing number 20, wide receiver, defensive back, and a senior. Senior Daniel Sines wearing number 21 jersey, wide receiver and defensive back. Number 22, Noah Cantu, wide receiver, defensive back. And a senior wearing number 50 is Aaron Morales, offensive line, linebacker, and a junior. Jonathan Salinas, senior, is a, a wearing number 51, an offensive lineman, defensive lineman. Wearing number 52, Raymond Cortez, junior. Uh, lines on both sides. Bailey Lovelady, number 53, offensive Offensive line, defensive line, and a senior. Number 54, Alan Rodriguez, offensive line, defensive line, and senior. Wearing number 55 is Peyton Hart, offensive line, defensive line, and a senior. Ivan Mora is a senior, wearing number 64. Both sides of the ball on the line. Ethan Whitworth, number 66, offensive line, defensive line, and a junior. Osmar Rodriguez, wearing number 67. A lineman on both sides of the ball and a junior, Jake Villanueva, number 72. A line on both sides and a sophomore, Aiden Mendoza. He's a lineman on offense and defense and a junior, Camilo Espinoza, wears number 78. He's a senior and a lineman, R Ramsey Martinez, wears number 81. He's wide receiver and a defensive back and a senior on this year's 2023 MHS varsity football squad 
Of course, our athletic director, head football coach, as we mentioned earlier, is Jason Richards. Aaron Simon is the associate head football coach. Offensive coordinator is Chris Mosier. Defensive coordinator for this year's team is Daryl Davis. Special teams coordinator is Stephen Butler. Jackson Lee, A.J. Villanueva, Justin Reyna, assistant coaches Austin Ross, Brand Davis, and Gentry Doolittle, the athletic director, is Stephen Seymour. Of course, the superintendent for the Muleshoe Schools is Dr. R.L. Richards. Cindy Basir is the principal. And the football operations students are Fabian Ortega and Isaac Campus. And that's your 2023 Muleshoe Mules varsity football roster. And uh, as we said during the roster, we'll give you the starting lineup on offense the quarterback for this year's team is nathan martins uh, left tackle peyton hart left guard osmart rodriguez center is ivan Morham. right guard is raymond cortez right tackles jake villanueva wide receiver mauricio herrera uh, inside receiver you hear Casada. running back is daniel signs Inside receiver, Sebastian Curvin. Wide receiver, Ramsey Martinez. Then on defense, the defensive end, the starters are Sebastian Curvin. Um, nose tackle, Camilo Espinosa. Tackle, Jonathan Salinas. Defensive end, Aiden Mendoza. Outside linebacker, Daniel Sines. Corner, Ramsey Martinez. Uh, Will linebackers, Noah Cantu. Mike linebacker, Aaron Morales. Strong safety, uh, Jose Sigala. Corner, Mauricio Herrera. The free safety is Yahir Casada. The punter for this year's team will be Nathan Martins. And the punt returner, Yahir Casada. So good luck to the Mule Shoe Mules as they get the 2023 season underway. It actually starts tonight on Thursday night. August the 24th at Littlefield as the JV team takes on the Wildcats. Then at 7 o'clock Friday night, August the 25th at Benny Douglas Football Stadium, the Mules will take on, the Varsity will take on the Littlefield Wildcats. Join the MHS Junior class as they'll have their pregame meal for the before the war on 84. Beginning at 4.30 until 6, dine in or carry out. They'll have a Chick-fil-A sandwich meal for $10, sandwich, chips, cookies, and a drink. That's 4.30 until 6, Friday, August 25th, before the Milshu Littlefield football game at the MHS Commons area. Again, it's dine in or carry out and sponsored by the MHS Junior Class. Chick-fil-A sandwich meal, $10 sandwich, chips, cookies, and a drink. Again, 4.30 until 6 at the MHS Commons area. Dine in or carry out before the Milshu versus Littlefield varsity football game Friday, August the 25th. And Premier Chevrolet GMC, they're a brand new business over in Littlefield, taking over John Rowley Autoplex there on 84, right on the southeast side of Littlefield. Since 2018, the Mule Shoe and Littlefield Booster Clubs have come together to sell War on 84 shirts. All proceeds from shirt sales have been donated to either a Littlefield or Mule Shoe individual in need. Premier Chevrolet GMC of Littlefield has joined the two communities to help serve someone in need and has purchased 300 War on 84 t-shirts to be given away prior to the game. There's 150 t-shirts for Littlefield fans and 150 shirts for Mule Shoe fans to commemorate the rivalry and help raise funds for a charity through the donation of the t-shirts prior to the game at the dealerships in Littlefield and you can go by that uh, their uh, offices there on the southeast side of Littlefield on Highway 84 the actual physical address is 8 1852 East Marshall Howard Boulevard in Littlefield Premier Chevrolet GMC you can get a free War on 84 t-shirt for either Mule or Littlefield and give a donation uh, beginning today uh, at 4.30. So especially if you're headed toward Lubbock today, you can just pop in. Or if you're going to support the Mules tonight for the kickoff at 5 o'clock of the JV game. That's at Premier Chevrolet GMC there in Littlefield along Highway 84 on the southeast side of town. We'll be back with more Mule Train news in just a few moments, so please stay tuned. This edition of the Mule Train news is brought to you today by Liao's Mexican Restaurant. 
here in Mule Shoe at the original Leal's 1010 West American Boulevard. They have a new bar with a bar menu that includes domestic beers priced very affordably, including Coors for three fifty, Miller Lite three fifty, Bud Light three seventy five, Budweiser three seventy five, Michelob Ultra three fifty, and Shinerbach three seventy five in their import beer menu. Corona is four dollars. Tecate is two seventy five. Modelo four dollars. Modelo is special four dollars. Dos Equis is four dollars. Pacifico four twenty five. Victoria is four twenty five. Corona Premier is four dollars on their mixed drinks. The Sangria Swirl marked at nine dollars now. Beer Rita's eleven fifty. Sangria eight dollars. Sangria wine eight dollars. Strawberry Margaritas. Frozen or on the rocks, eight fifty. Mango margarita, frozen or on the rocks, eight fifty. House margarita, frozen or on the rocks, only eight dollars. And the Micheladas with any beer is eight fifty. That's the brand new bar menu available now when they're open at Leal's Mexican Restaurant, ten ten West American Boulevard. Victor, Debbie, Angelique, and all their employees say come down and try their new bar menu available now at Leal's, the original Leal's, right here in Muleshoe, 1010 West American Boulevard. Also brand new at Leal's, including in their bar menu, they have Enjoy Refreshing Chilton's, the original, for six twenty-five, or you can get a watermelon or cucumber Chilton for seven fifty. now on the bar menu at Leal's Mexican Food Restaurant, the original, right here in Mealshoe, 1010 West American Boulevard. The Mealshoe Area Medical Center reminds you that Texas Health Steps is available now through the medical clinic of Muleshoe. Texas Health Steps is health care for children through age 20 who have Medicaid and gives you f- your child free medical checkups starting at birth. Checkups can help find health problems before they get worse and harder to treat. Keep your little cowboy or cowgirl healthy today. If you have Medicaid insurance, call Medical Clinic of Muleshoe, 806-272-7544 to schedule your child's free medical checkup through the Muleshoe Area Medical Center. Well, it's time now for the weather forecast here on Channel 6, and we're still looking for a sponsor for our weather forecasts. If you, your business, your organization, your church are using an individual, want to sponsor our weather, call us on my cell phone, 806-566-5881. Well, it continues to be hot hot and dry although this week we've cooled off somewhat we've got some moisture in the atmosphere and clouds uh, and that is a godsend but still no rain it has been extremely paltry for the month of august so far through 24 days we only have 12 one hundredths of an inch of rain so far during the whole month here at the national weather service station in our backyard and the mesonet only has uh seven one hundreds it's two miles south of town the earth mesonet for the month of august only has 16 one hundredths of an inch of rain and it's right next to toke plant our average high temperature for the month of august so far has been 98 degrees that's an average through the whole 24 days so far in august and uh it has been hot like i said we have had 10 days of 100 degree temperatures or higher 17 days of 97 degrees or higher so it's even hotter so far than back in july we only had uh, seven days of 100 degrees and 15 days of 97 or higher so we've already uh, surpassed those numbers through 24 days in august but it's just been a hot dry uh summer so far after the first week in june uh, we got lots of rain and through the mid and late may we got a, a lot of rain along with lots of cool temperatures but since that first week in june it's been extremely hot and extremely dry here in muleshoe along with the whole south plains and panhandle regions again through 24 days in August, we have 12 one hundredths of rain only here at the National Weather Service Station at Channel 6. The Mealshoe Mezzanet Station, two miles south of town, right off of uh, Highway 214, has seven one hundredths 
for August and 16 one hundredths of an inch of rain at the Earth Mesonet Station, which is right next to Tolk Plant to the northeast of the town of Milshu. And again, 10 days of 100 degree temperatures, triple digits, uh, temps are higher, and 17 days of 97 degrees are higher so far here at the National Weather Service Station at Channel 6 during August. So we are very, very lucky though, because that uh, finally broke uh, earlier in the week, and we have had some decent uh, temperatures here as uh, we went down to uh, the high temperature on August 21st, which was uh, Monday, was only 95. Tuesday, the high was back to 98, low 65. Wednesday, the high was only 98 degrees and 65. And then uh, so far, uh, Today, it has only been 90 degrees. It's 87 right now, and it's very cloudy outside our uh, broadcast studio here in Channel 6. Our forecast calls for a high near 93 degrees. We'll take that. Sunny conditions, south wind around 15 miles per hour today on Thursday for Muleshoe. Mostly clear tonight with a low around 66. South winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Then sunny on Friday back up to only 96 degrees. We'll take that as well. South winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Probably cloudy Friday night. Low around 65. South winds 5 to 15 miles per hour becoming west southwest after midnight for our weekend saturday sunny high near 96 degrees again west winds 10 to 5 to 10 miles per hour becoming south southeast in the afternoon saturday night partly cloudy low around 68 then we've got some rain that comes into the forecast beginning on sunday so keep your fingers crossed put rain on your prayer list and we have a 20 percent chance of showers and thunderstorms mainly sunday afternoon after 1 p.m mostly sunny otherwise high near 95 degrees so that's wonderful north wind Winds around 10 miles per hour becoming east in the afternoon. Sunday night, a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Again, mostly cloudy, low around 65. East southeast winds around 10 miles per hour becoming north northeast after midnight. A chance of showers and thunderstorms during the day on Monday, partly sunny, high near 86 degrees. Boy, that sounds lovely. Uh, again, I'll repeat, Monday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, partly sunny, high only at 86 degrees to kick off our week next week on Monday. Northeast winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Monday night, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, again, partly cloudy, low around 62. Tuesday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms next week, mostly sunny. High only around 87 degrees. Tuesday night, mostly clear, low around 60. Wednesday, sunny, high only at 90 degrees. So, boy, that's a wonderful way to start next week off with rain chances moving in on Sunday afternoon and sticking with us all the way through uh, Tuesday during the day. So say a prayer for rain and keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully it'll turn around here toward the end of the month as, like I said, only 12 one hundredths of an inch of rain so far during the month of August here at the National Weather Service Station in our backyard here on the south edge of Muleshoe. Well, things are really getting back to normal as the Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association will hold their annual meeting of members next week on Tuesday, August the 29th at the Bailey County Coliseum. Of course, since the pandemic in 2020, they've been having a drive through annual meeting. And that was, you know, a lot of fun and quick and fast and good food and uh, as well. But they've gone back to the regular annual meeting at the Coliseum again, Tuesday, August 29th of 2020 annual meeting of members for the Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association. So if you're a member uh, of of Bailey County Electric, you are welcome. That's at 2206 West American Boulevard on the west edge of Muleshoe. At 530, they will begin with member registration and a meal. Then at 630, they will have their meeting and then give away door prizes. And if you're a member of the Bailey County Electric, you're welcome to their annual meeting beginning at 5.30 p.m. with member registration in a meal on Tuesday, August 29th at the Bailey County Coliseum 2206 West American Boulevard here in Muleshoe, Texas. 
Boy, that was sad, the news that came out yesterday about the passing of the legendary wrestler Terry Funk uh, from the Amarillo area. And uh, he was a great guy. If you never met him personally, a really nice down-to-earth guy. If you don't uh, remember back in 2010, Jim Young mentioned to me that we should bring him to town. And, of course, Jim had played football at WT and was good friends with Terry Funk. And so Jim and I put it together and brought Terry Funk, and he came to Mulesy one Saturday afternoon and signed uh, his new book, uh, More Than Hardcore, at Carolyn's Christmas Creations or Carolyn's Floor and Gifts. I'm not sure which one it was at that time, as this was the summer of 2010. And Terry was just as nice, affable, kind, spent time with all the fans. And boy, he had people lined up, probably around 100 people there as the book signing started. And he spent lots of time. We interviewed Terry uh, and uh, mom, of course, did that interview. So if you want to take a trip back in the past with mom interviewing somebody, and especially the legendary Terry Funk, go to our Facebook page, Gil Lamb. We shared it yesterday when news of Terry's passing came across uh, on our our Gil Lamb Facebook page, our Channel 6 Meal Shoe Facebook page, and our Twitter feed, Channel 6 Meal Shoe. Terry Funk was 79 years old. We had some great comments under our share yesterday of the Terry Funk interview from 2010. Nancy Sloan wrote, Gil Robert, thanks for posting this. It's been a while since I've heard Mag Ann's voice. I miss her so much since I moved. How young she looks. Terry Young, of course, is Jim's uh, wife. Of course, Jim died last year. Uh, but Terry Young remembers. Thanks for posting this, Gil Robert. Sure brings back great memories. There will never be another Terry Funk. Jim and Terry uh, would have talked to your mom for hours if she would have let them. So thankful for the archives of interviews you have kept through the years. Leanne Gallman, our former city manager and longtime city secretary, wrote, We grew up watching him and others wrestle every Saturday afternoon. Um, Rosa Davis wrote, I used to see him at Clovis, a very nice man. Chris Young, Jim's son, wrote The Funker and Jim Young Classic. And, of course, Jim Young, of course, is in that interview along with Terry from 2010 at Carolyn's. And so, again, look for that on our Facebook and Twitter feed. I do remember seems like Terry or uh, Greg Young, one of the two shared, I think it was Greg shared some posters that he had uh, and uh, they were supporting uh, wrestling events that were going on. One was like in 1980, I think it was at the Coliseum and Coliseum was probably brand spanking new. And of course the wrestlers there and Terry Funk was, uh, I believe one of them that wrestled. And then they were having uh, wrestling before that, the Coliseum was built in one of the gymnasiums at school, maybe the MH, the old MHS gymnasium, but those are great memories when wrestling. They had circuits out of Amarillo, and they came through Muleshoe, Littlefield, uh, Clovis, uh, Leveland, and wrestled all throughout the area. Frontera Feed Yard is the sponsor of the week at the Bailey County Senior Center. It was actually last week, and I got so busy, I, d I couldn't do a mule train news and didn't get it up. But this is what Earl Barons there on the board of directors wrote about Frontera Feed Yard. In keeping with the sponsor of the week program, the Bailey County Senior Center would like to announce Frontera Feed Yard as our sponsor of the week for August 14th through 18th. Frontera Feed Yard has been an integral part of Baylor County since 1960. It started out as King Feed Yard, then changed ownership and was known as West Tex Feed Yard. And now, for the past 13 years, has operated under the name Frontera Feed Yard. Frontera is a 25,000 head feed yard located on the western edge of Muleshoe. Frontera shares the community interest with the local residents and merchants of Muleshoe. The current manager of Frontera is Sam Stevenson. Sam has been the manager for the past 10 years. Frontera Feed Yard has 25 full-time employees and hires a number of part-time seasonal employees as well. Frontera feeds approximately 700,000 pounds of feed 
per day. One of the most memorable examples of community that Sam and Frontera were part of was during the Goliath blizzard of uh, December 2015. Frontera employees took front end loaders to open roads to and from uh, the town of Muleshoe and the surrounding area. That was an experience I hope we never have to do over, said Sam Stevenson. We at the Bailey County Senior Center are proud of Frontera and the support they provide for the community. Please join us in celebrating Frontera Feed Yard as the sponsor of the week at the Bailey County Senior Center. There's some more things going on at the Senior Center, including the senior workouts are every Tuesday and Thursday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, it's called a matter of balance. That's Tuesdays and Thursday mornings, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Senior workout, a matter of balance. Curtis Shelburne will be singing at the Senior Center tomorrow at lunch, Friday, August the 25th. So make sure and go down for that. Curtis Shelburne singing f during the lunch hour on Friday, August 25th. They'll be playing bingo every other Wednesday at 1 p.m. and alternating between bingo and Loteria. Wednesday, August 30th, they'll be playing Loteria. It's $5 per card. They'll be having a pancake breakfast Saturday, September the 6th. Mark it on your calendar. Excuse me, September 16th. That's Saturday, September 16th, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Then United Pharmacy will be at the Senior Center on September the 29th, administering flu shots. Specific information will follow, and they'll have a sign-up sheet sometime next month at the Senior Center. Tomorrow on Friday, uh, August 25th, they'll be serving for lunch at the Senior Center, Main and Avenue D, Fish or Chicken Strips. Baracho beans, green peas, tossed vegetable salad, locale French dressing, whole wheat roll, tropical fruit mix. Then tomorrow, uh, next week on Monday, spaghetti with meat sauce, Italian vegetables, broccoli, autumn jello, garlic toast. Then Tuesday, August 29th, chicken salad sandwich, tomato, lettuce, and pickle, macaroni, salad, carrot sticks, and watermelon. Wednesday next week on the 30th of August, chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes, country gravy, stewed okra, seasoned corn, and a pumpkin square. That's what they serve every Wednesday, the chicken fried steak meal at the Senior Center. Then Thursday next week, they'll be ser uh, on the 31st, they'll be ser August 31st, they'll be serving cheeseburger with bun, potato wedges, tomato wedge, salad, and a melon medley. That's the Senior Center menu for the next week at Main and Avenue D. Sign up now as they will have a blood drive at the First Baptist Church of Mule Shoe Friday, September the 1st next week, noon until 3 p.m. in their blood mobile. To schedule an appointment, you can call 806-331-8833 or visit their website, ourbloodinstitute.org. Donate blood and get a free ticket to the Discovery Center in Amarillo and a free uh, bunt cake, a small bunt cake from Nothing Bunt Cakes. All donors will receive a Faith in Blood t-shirt again. Sign up now for the blood drive that will be at the First Baptist Church of Muleshoe Friday, September 1st. From noon until 3 p.m., call 806-331-8833 or visit their website, ourbloodinstitute.org. Well, another video that we've done uh, that is fairly recent. Last week, we did the live stream from the Muleshoe City Council meeting. And uh, in that meeting, they talk about how the Muleshoe Water Park has closed for the regular season hours, but they've decided to continue on on the weekends and they'll be open saturdays 1 until 8 p.m and sunday from 1 until 6 p.m until further notice we'll try to keep doing this having weekend hours for the water park through august and possibly through uh, the end of september so we'll see how that goes the milshu water park again open on weekends now through at least August and maybe September, every Saturday, 1 until 8, and Sunday, 1 until 6 p.m. We think that's a great idea. Also, another live stream, of course, that we always do every Sunday at 11 a.m. is the First Baptist Church and the full service there, including the message by Dr. Stacy Connor every Sunday that begins 
uh, at 11 a.m. This coming Sunday, it will be September the uh, 28th, I believe. Let, let's see, the 27th, excuse me, Sunday, September 27th, 11 a.m. We'll have the full service live stream, uh, and the message will be by Dr. Stacy Connor from Matthew 16, 13 through 20. Look to the rock. Then later on every Sunday, we have the uh, delayed audio feeds from the Calvary Baptist Church and their message from Brother Jeff Kaufman, and then from the first uh, or the Muleshoe Methodist Church and the their minister, David Maccabee. That's every Sunday at MuleshoeTV.com. Well, on your prayer list today, continue to remember Cliff Black, Terry Byers, Rowena Myers, Suzanne Nichols. Remember on your prayer list, please pray for rain. Also, Renee Copley and Jonathan Flores, Debbie Hammer, Roby Kelton, Bernie Martz, Mac McLeod, Eddie Morris, Cleta Robertson, Mandy Whitaker, Colleen Saylor, Robert Alanise, Joe and Leela Copley. Keep on your prayer list today as well. Jerome Clemens and John Blackwell, he, uh, formerly a mule shoe, he's now in Bovina. And say a big happy birthday as John Blackwell turns 80 today. Olivia Barrera, keep Wanda Schaefer on your prayer list today. Norris Conklin, who's in the nursing home in Clovis. Gabby Stone, Tina Costillo, Julie Cage, Bird and Larry Combs, Melba King. Tom and Linda Watson, Dorothy Wire, Sue Basir. Keep Ed and Carol Cox on your prayer list today. Betty Noble, Joe Jinx, Marjorie Morgan needs to be on your prayer list today as well. Carrie and Pat Moore, their residents at the uh, Parkview Nursing Care Center. Robert Johnson and Daryl Embry, Jerry Bruton. Keep on your prayer list those recently... Uh, Grieving the loss of a loved one or a, a family or a friend. Uh, Pe the family of Peggy Kent Baker. The family of Gregorio Torres. The family of Dolores Valeria Jacobs Catron. The family of Rosalie Powell. The family of Ramona Sanchez. The family of Waylon, Christopher Waylon Peeler. The family of Lewis Wayne Schaefer, and keep the family of Ruben Orozco on your prayer list today. Hey, hey. Well, it's just about time for us to go on this edition of the Mule Train Mule News, Train. brought to you today by Leal's Mexican hey, Restaurant. Hey. You can hear our latest Mule Train News program, along with all our older archived ones over the past decade, free of charge, on demand on our website, MuleshoeTV.com. Click on the Mule Train News link at the top center of the page. The Sound of Texas is brought to you here on MuleshoeTV.com by Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association with offices in Muleshoe at 610 East American Boulevard as well as in Morton at 1744 State Highway 114. They're celebrating rural electrification right here in the Muleshoe area through Bailey County Electric since 1939. They're owned by the members that they serve. Call 806-272-4504. Check them out online at BCEC. COOP.com, the board of directors, the members, the employees, the manager, CEO, David Markle, all hope you enjoy this Sound of Texas with Tumbleweed Smith. Plano has been able to see the world by his ability to string tennis rackets. I have. I went to London in 2003 for the winter, went to China last year in September for the China Open in Beijing for 17 days. He learned how to string while working at a sports store. He strings for some of the top tennis players in the world. Most players will string their racket every day, whether the string's broken or not. They'll be stringing four, five, six, seven, ten rackets a day. And they need every single one of them every day for their duration of the tournament. Some players change rackets every time the ball strings. 
they get their balls, they bring get the ball games. So the players can throw the balls are fresh. I want fresh things. Others, uh, they just get a, a metal grip and they just want to try something different. Randy has earned the rank of Master Racket Technician and has written articles about swinging. He stays busy during the tournament. In Thailand, I did uh, 95 rackets in a week. Miami just last uh, month. I did 100 and 70 in seven days. He did the math, it comes out to a little over 24 rackets a day. He can strain a racket in 12 to 15 minutes. The fastest time ever is 8 minutes and 48 seconds. So it's something you kind of have to see to understand. Because not only are you putting the strains through the control, then when you get to the cross strains, you've got to go over and under, over and under, and the next strain has to be under, over and over. Do the main strains, which are the vertical ones, and then when you go back and start doing the crosses, start out under and over and under, over and over, like we were the He uses nylon or cow intestine when he strains the racket. Sometimes it'll be one continuous. 32 foot section. Sometimes we'll do a hybrid of two different materials, like we'll do a polyester spray, which is really, really durable. We'll run that in the vertical, and then you'll run in like a natural gut in the cross strings, so you get a little bit more feel, take away some of the harshness of the polyester strings. Randy Stevens from Plano. Some of his training customers have been with him for 10 years. I'm Tumbleweed Smith with the Sound of Texas.